In this next example, we're going to look at um, the technique involved in integrating a product of two even powers of sines and cosines instead of the situation where at least one is odd. So first thing we're going to notice here is that these are both even, both even powers. So if we recall how we um, handled integrating the situation where we had at least one odd, we would pull off a sine or pull off a cosine, which would leave the um, remaining part, part as an even power, and we were then able to use a Pythagorean identity on this. So note that in this case, we'd have a different sort of situation. If we pull off a sine or a cosine here, the remaining part will be an odd power. So we can't use the Pythagorean identity. So we're going to need a different identity in this case. So one other thing you might ask is, well, why can't I just use the Pythagorean identity here to begin with? Well, that's not going to help us because if I replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared, I still have this squared power. Um, that I have to deal with, so it doesn't actually make it any simpler to replace this to begin with the Pythagorean identity. So instead, we're going to use that other um, identity that we talked about in terms of our different key identities, which is using the half angle or the power reducing identity. So remember that these identities were the ones that had sine squared was equal to 1 minus cosine 2x over 2, and cosine squared was equal to 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. Okay, so we're going to be making use of these identities. So notice that I have both of these being even. So I'm going to want to use the power reducing identity on both of these. So I'm going to replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2. And notice that cosine to the fourth, well, that's cosine squared squared. So I'm going to replace that by 1 plus cosine 2x over 2 quantity squared. Okay. So you may need a little bit more room for this than on the notes page. This is going to take a, a few steps to multiply all of this out and see what kind of terms we have. So notice if I just look at the constant terms here, I'm going to have a 1 eighth out in front. And then I'll have this 1 minus cosine 2x times 1 plus cosine 2x squared. So if we take 1 plus cosine 2x times 1 plus cosine 2x, we're going to get 1 plus 2 cosine 2x plus cosine squared 2x dx. Okay, so what are we going to do next here? Well, we got to continue with a little bit of the, the algebra multiplying this out and look at what that sum of the different terms is going to be. So when we um, multiply 1 through and then multiply the um, negative cosine 2x through and collect our like terms, we're going to have 1 plus cosine 2x minus cosine squared 2x minus cosine cubed 2x dx. So you want to just make sure um, if you did the algebra yourself between those two steps, you would end up with that same um, sum of those four terms. So what do we notice about these terms here? Okay, so I know how I can take the antiderivative of 1 and of cosine 2x. Notice that these two involve powers of cosine. This first one is an even power, so we're going to make use of our guideline for how we handle that, which is going to be using the power reducing identity. Here with cosine cubed, I have an odd power, so I'm going to need to use the Pythagorean identity. Okay, so we see how we can use um, multiple techniques here with these um, and trig integrals within one problem. So let's work on scrolling down here a little bit and doing the next couple steps. So I've got 1 eighth here. We're going to have the integral, let's see, we can't 
do the integrals of all the terms yet. Let's just leave this as 1 plus cosine 2x and then do our identity um, replacements here. So cosine squared 2x, remember cosine squared x was 1 plus cosine 2x. So if we have here cosine squared 2x, then everywhere there was an x in this identity, that's now going to be 2x. So this is going to be 1 plus cosine 2 times 2x, or 4x over 2. Okay, so notice that what we put over here in the cosine of 2x piece is actually cosine of 2 times, or double the whatever the angle is, over here inside cosine squared. Okay, so this is going to be 1 plus cosine 4x over 2, making sure that's in parentheses, so I'll distribute that negative sign. And then we have minus our cosine cubed. Well, I want to follow my technique with using the Pythagorean identity where I pull off a cosine. So in this case, I pull off a cosine 2x and I'm left with a cosine squared 2x. And this part we're going to be using that Pythagorean identity on to get that um, in terms of sines. Okay, so let's keep going here with this. We have 1 8th, the integral of, let's see, how is this going to simplify? Well, I'm going to have 1 plus cosine 2x. This is going to end up being minus a half and then minus cosine 4x over 2. So I can combine this 1 and this what's going to become a minus 1 half into just positive a half plus cosine 2x um, minus cosine 4x over 2. Okay, and I'm going to make that um, my first integral here. And let's see, then make this minus, oops, minus my integral, and now deal with, with this, this piece here that I'm going to have to use u substitution on. So this is going to be 1 minus sine squared 2x times cosine 2x dx. Okay, so we just broke that up into two pieces, basically because I know now I'm going to be able to take the antiderivative of each of these three terms. We know how to do the antiderivative of 1 half, cosine of 2x, and this cosine of 4x over 2. So it's just this other part here that requires um, a few more techniques, specifically u substitution, to figure out what the rest of that integral is. So here, we're going to let u be equal to sine of 2x instead of just sine x, because I do have sine of 2x in there. My du will then be 2 cosine of 2x dx. So we see how this part's going to be part of our du. So I'll have 1 half du is cosine 2x dx. Okay, so where are we at now? Well, we have 1 eighth times my integral of 1 half plus cosine 2x minus cosine 4x over 2. Okay, we haven't done any um, antiderivatives yet, so that's just ready for us to evaluate. Now I'm going to look at this integral here. I'm going to have minus, well the cosine 2x dx part here is going to get replaced by 1 half du, and the 1 minus sine squared 2x is going to become 1 minus u squared. So we really simplified that second integral a lot by using our u substitution. Okay, so now we're ready to take the antiderivatives of all of these pieces. So I have 1 eighth uh, antiderivative of 1 half. I'm going to have x over 2. Antiderivative of cosine 2x will have sine 2x over 2. Okay, for our next term we'll have sine 4x divided by 8, because this would be 1 half. Um, then times the antiderivative of cosine 4x, which would be sine 4x over 4, so that 2 times 4 gives us the 8. And I'm going to have minus 1 half, and this part is u minus u cubed over 3. Okay, so the last step is just to replace that u with our sine of 2x. So in our next step here, we can go ahead and multiply this 1 8 through, so we're going to have x over 16 plus sine 2x over 16 minus sine 4x over 16. This 1 8 will get multiplied through, so this will be 
minus 1 over 16 here. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute that um, by our u minus u cubed over 3 with sine 2x plugged in. So this will be sine 2x in for u. And then that minus 1 over 16 um, is also going to get multiplied times our negative 1 third that's here. So that's going to become a positive 1 over 48. So we'll have a negative and times a negative is a positive times that 1 eighth. And then the u cubed part is going to be sine cubed 2x plus c. So we see that this does simplify a little bit. I have this positive sine 2x over 16 and this negative sine 2x over 16. So we can cancel those out and then just write down our final answer here. So we do get that the integral of sine squared x cosine to the fourth x dx equals x over 16 minus sine 4x over, excuse me, I wrote 16. This was 8 times 8. This is 64 here. So this is sine 4x over 64 plus sine cubed 2x over 48 plus c.